Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup and the Linux edition of the news, where we're going to be talking about some of the latest things that I found interesting in the Linux community for separate articles today as we dive on in. The first up is there is a critical shim bug impacts that ne impacts nearly every Linux bootloader signed in the past decade with a uh, threat score of 9.8 and allows remote code execution in the startup loop. <laughs> Yeah, great, wonderful day in the world. Hey, it's 2024. We're starting off with a bang, right? Uh, so this has to do with the shim, which is part of the, uh, when it boots up, it's going to check the local drive for a signing key. If it doesn't find one, it makes an HTTP request, and that HTTP request can be man in the middle. And so that ultimately is what it boils down to. But there were a few other bugs all involved. There were, uh, what is that, five total bugs. There's an error log invocation. We have... Um, uh, integer overflow aspect section and size 32-bit system. So if you're running a 32-bit system. So all of these things have been patched. So if you see something that is updating anything involved in the bootloading sequence, uh, it's probably patching these. Just be aware that uh, there is a remote code execution allowed through a man-in-the-middle request of the uh, secure, seek, um, uh, secure key signing, uh, signing keys. So... That is definitely uh, a frightening thing. They say every Linux distribution, but it's not every, but it certainly is the vast majority of them. Certainly any l modern Linux distribution that is attempting to utilize Secure Boot. Um, and so obviously that is a lot of distributions nowadays. So just be aware of that. Keep an eye out for those updates. They should already be there on most mainstream distributions, but um, hey, quite terrifying. Well, we have a little bit of Ubuntu news that was fascinating to me. Uh, this one here, the Ubuntu Core. So remember Ubuntu Core was going to be a immutable system based entirely on snaps, mostly built for like server implementations, things like that, but they had a desktop option. Well, for the first time, I think, ever, Canonical says, yeah, this isn't ready for a release. It originally, originally was be being planned on the same release date as the 2404 LTS, but they're actually holding it back because there are a number of bugs that they do not predict they're going to be able to fix by then. And so, like, the first time in history, Ubuntu's like, hey, we're going to not release this on our set in stone, uh, carved on the hieroglyphics uh, release date uh, because something's not working right. And I think that this is a good step. Maybe more distributions should wait until they're ready to be released rather than uh, just the calendar has thus set it and therefore let's do it. So I think that this is good. I think that this core Ubuntu desktop. It's certainly not my cup of tea, obviously, being a person that I'm not a huge fan of snaps, as you know, but there are there is certainly a good market for this. And I absolutely support uh, any of its developers working on these immutable systems because there are definitely good use cases for something like this. So you can still experiment around with this in, um, you know, in like daily bills and things like that, but they're not releasing the official one until they have it done. They don't have an estimated release date yet, but they're basically like, yeah, there's too many problems, so we're not going to uh, release that exactly on schedule. They are also, to their credit, focusing as more of their energy on the LTS because it is really important to get an LTS right. Uh, and hopefully, uh, I, don't, I don't think we had an LTS that launched right and ready since 16, though. So <laughs> that was, I don't know. Uh, but in other Ubuntu news, we are losing yet another app to the grasp of Snap. Yes, Thunderbird no longer will be packaged in the Ubuntu repositories. At least if it will be, it's just going to be a Snap referrer. Of course, all of the people about four or five years ago when I had my videos saying this is problematic, they're going to be replacing this passages. And I was like, they wouldn't possibly do that. You're spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it turns out I was right all along. I've been right about more things than I've been wrong in my predictions going forward. So, of course, the first package was Thunderbird, or excuse me, was Firefox. So if you went into the terminal, because they're like, you can always install the, the apt version. Well, you go apt install Firefox. It just installed SnapD and installed the Snap. <laughs> Uh, so obviously I was right about that. And then since then they have moved several packages of software. And in my opinion, what's happening is we're seeing this code shift going on in the Linux world where we're 
uh, and I, I don't know if it's a good, it might actually be a good thing, but Mozilla, for example, they're managing Firefox, they're managing uh, your Thunderbird. So now they're packaging these standalone dev packages that you can use and they're taking back that control. But what is happening with the Snap Revolution, even the Flatpak Revolution, to a lesser extent app images, is the Linux distributions are not packaging as much software, and so we become reliant on these platforms. In my opinion, I don't think the Snap is a good platform because of the proprietary centralized distribution method. So we are losing another one. So if you install... Uh, if you install Ubuntu after 24.04 and you install like the full software suite, you are getting Thunderbird as a snap. And they are not packaging the uh, the dev version inside of the system. So you can either use the PPA, which Mozilla makes available to install Thunderbird through the PPA for Ubuntu, or you can use the Flatpak. So you will have Snap, Flatpak, or a PPA. So this is what I'm seeing is as more and more applications go to Snap, Canonical itself is bundling less packages in the repository. And so we're seeing some degradation of code because of things like this. And this is why I sounded the alarms on Snaps a long time ago. So that is uh, that. Is that. And uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Of course, you can test this out now. Snap install beta Thunderbird. So you can go ahead and grab it now if you want. You can roll that back if you want as well. So another application lost to the uh, evil death grip of Snap. We have altered the deal, pray. We do not alter it further. And on to our last article, Windows is stealing more features from Linux. Uh, you know, if, good thing Linux doesn't have a centralized place, you know, like a centralized team like Microsoft does. Maybe <laughs> suing Windows for stealing all their features. And then, of course, we do something like slightly out of line. Windows is like, we're going to lawsuit you, you know. Uh, but they're stealing pseudo, apparently. Now, it's not functional, but it did show up in the latest build of Windows 11 on um is it the Canary? Is that, uh, do I have the right software? Uh, I think it's the Canary. So uh, it's basically the testing ground for Windows 11 going forward. So they noticed sudo has showed up. So obviously the application is if you would otherwise want to run a command prompt in an administrative mode, you have to open the entire command prompt as an administrator in Windows in order to run a any form of administrative work inside of a basic uh, terminal window. But uh, or command prompt window, as they call it in Windows. But now they're adding sudo. So in theory, if you do need to do something, escalated privileges to an administrator inside the command prompt inside of Windows, you will, in theory, have sudo. Now they say it's there. It doesn't do anything. So it's not clear what it's going to do. We kind of know what it's going to do. Okay. <laughs> so super user do or substitute user do is what sudo stands for. And so... They're putting sudo into Windows, borrowing more things. You know, think of how great Windows is now because of all of the things it's stolen from Linux. Like, I think nearly everything, other than the early stuff they stole from Apple, they pretty much got from Linux. <laughs> it's exciting. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. You can jump on over there, help support the channel. And uh, we do have a few different uh, membership tiers uh, whatever. And we don't make a whole lot of distinction between which ones uh, you're in. It's just help as uh, you are able to help. Uh, so that is a great uh, great way to do that. Of course, um, some of the big perks we have, you can participate in the uh, live show on Thursdays and also the off-air hangouts. We also have short stories. Our last short story is I Am Watching. If you guys are supporters and you've read or listened to the audiobook for I Am Watching, uh, go ahead and let us know what you thought about it. And I got to say, I'm working on the next one right now. It wrote it half hour. It wrote a whole chapter for me today. Like these fingers did neat. Did, I, I, I was tickling my keyboard like the ivories and all of a sudden this really neat chapter of a story came out like wow i didn't think i was going to do something like that not to toot my own horn there but it was a pretty good one it's uh it'll be a neat one so this one's uh this one's pretty cool of course, if you do have ideas for what you can, uh, what you'd like to uh, participate, if you have a neat idea for a science fiction story, go ahead and leave us those comments. I will add them to my wall of ideas for short stories over here, <laughs> and uh, we'll get into those. But patreon.com slash T-O-M-M.